one diode out and from Anchor Electronics got a car we repaired it okay I just came back from an errand and Mike had a great news for, for, for me this is that our famous module that we thought we had repaired yeah. is the fossil digs it has another fault mm -hmm. on top of the two ones we saw and it's not a fun one first four cores showed them setting and resetting uh, and, and driving their transform or their uh, transistors yeah so pause a second these have large cores yes Right, the, 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 I'll insert a picture of the big, yeah. the big red ones. Yeah, they're, right? they're, they're similar to the core rope memory cores. Right, which were used for doing the memory circuit, well, actually, logic circuits. Mm -hmm. Right. Originally. Originally, yeah. and uh, they, they were designed out mostly, and but they remain in this module. Yes, here they're used for current steering, more or less. The okay. direction the core flips which is the direction current flows. Okay, and I'm gonna get my focus correct, okay. Uh, and when you were doing that, mm -hmm. something happened. Yep, so when I wired up for the fifth core and powered on the module, it drew a lot more current than I was expecting, so I turned it off right away. <laughs> and I uh, started trying to figure out what the cause of it was. And it turns out that we have a reset line that runs in through one pin through coils on four cores and out another pin and somehow somewhere this is shorted to the right selection pin uh, for right now which would I should have nothing in common with yeah it. The, the only thing they both go through different coils on some of the same cores uh -huh. and they might cross over each other on the nickel ribbon interconnect along the top of the module here wow that's but going to be a real pain to reach in there Yes. <laughs> and since you're Mike, you already kind of figured out where the fall could be. So these are the one net that's shorted to the other net is the two colors. Mm -hmm. yep. And so the reset winding comes in through one side of the module. Goes it, it goes through all the cores. Goes through the cores up through the nickel ribbon interconnect at the top of the module to the other side and then back down. Yeah, all in series. Thing. And then uh, the, the right X signal sort of branches out everywhere. And the, the, the fault is happening right about here, there. So it, it's reasonably far away from our, um, our digging site. So those are the wires that are not supposed to be connected at all. Right, yep. And there's 3.5 ohms. Uh, my worry is that one of the transformers is cooked and the, and the two wires no melted to it each other and yeah that would be bad and that would be super bad which means that i thought i was done with my dinosaur bones digging but i have to do it that takes forever that sets us back at least a day mm -hmm. dang we dug yet another pocket in the thing and this is the worst of fault it's a short and it's even worse than that's a semi short so we cannot use the usual short tracing techniques so short into 4 ohms 3.8 still there mm -hmm. and no on, on more modern hardware what you would do is put a little bit of power see where it heats up right but on this thing it's a transformer with 4 mil wires and we just don't want to risk blowing a transformer i still think i i'm very afraid it's a transformer we have to isolate by breaking a connection yep i am challenged in my optic centering there you go give it a little wiggle yeah so we disconnected this wire to see where the break is, well, where the short is, mm -hmm. you know, which side at least. 
So we separated one wire from top to bottom to figure mm -hmm. out which side it was and so measuring the answer is on the other side. Yeah, that means it's either on the other side or inside of the interconnect along the top. In the transition from top to bottom. So great, we started by digging on the wrong side. Yay! Whoa, it's all coming together. All right, all right, all right. So let me show what I did. This is my contribution. I have excavated a new window and I'm going to give it to Mike who has been waiting for it the whole afternoon, the whole day. <laughs> and so we know the fold is somewhere in there mm -hmm. and it's not on the other side. Can you show the other side? So of course I dug there first and me, that wasn't the fold. So it's somewhere here. So it's somewhere here. So my six pocket and it's half a day per pocket. All right, let's go test it. Oh, I still see a short. We'll see a short there, and if I come up here, touch this guy. No short. No short. So it was in the bottom transformer, right? Seems, seems to be. All right. So our short is somewhere in that guy, which is super bad news. It means we have to rewind, and then we have to. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick so we need more HP goodness. Really good. So this can do four wire measurement. Uh, so what did I miss? <coughs> it seems to be in this transform. A catastrophe. Yeah. You missed the bad news. So uh, where do you want to get measuring here? Between this and that, and this and that, okay. and then the reverse on the other pin and see if it, it gives an indication of what the thing is doing. So. First side. 5.28. Okay. Try from the other side of the yellow winding. Ah, 4.7. So it's closer to that side. Okay, well, we have two, two windings shorting. So what do we do? Take the transformer out or we make another circuit? Okay, so is this fellow underneath here, which has actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight leads. My suspicion is that it overheated um, in the same accident that blew everything else. But we don't know. And it's this fellow right here. And you can see it's... Here is the core, the giant core. It's windings, but they have way more turns that is shown here. 20 turns, 30 turns, 30 turns, 50 turns. Uh, but, which is not nice, and what you expect is, where's your potting thingy? Uh, these are notes for dash 011, it's right here, note 2. It says, potted in, is it the hard epoxy or the soft thing? I don't oh. know. We have basically two choices, right? Either we bypass the circuit and we build another one on the side, mm -hmm. or we extract the thing oh. <laughs> and pot it. I would just start another circuit on the side. We also have to make sure if we do a circuit on the side that we have some physical place for it to go in a closed up AGC. So either spare space in the cordwood or under the it wire would, wrap. It has, to be under, it has to be under the wire wrap. It has to be under the wire wrap because okay. we have to have access to the pins, right? tough problem. This is my proposed solution. You tell me if I am smoking something. Explanation. This is the circuit that fails. Mm -hmm. Right, it has the reset, the, uh, the select, and then the one that's, that, that gives a pulse up mm -hmm. and down. And what we are missing, we have, we have a short between the reset and the down transistor. Right? If we zap that wire and zap that wire, then we have fixed it, we're going to be fine again. And we are missing the one of the pulses. However, 
the pulses we are missing is not used here so when it's the correct direction it goes this way and it goes here and it's all fine when it's the wrong direction it goes that way and it's not used by the transistor so I propose we cut those two wires and then we steal the pulse from this when it's going the other direction so the way that's not used by this guy I think the gist of the idea is right uh, and I on the second piece of a transformer I put in the right polarity I feed it to its transistor mm -hmm. All right, well I, I think your circuit might work C could we replace that guy with the PNP and that's it and just hook them both up to the same coil maybe maybe that's even simpler okay other circuit proposal so you have a transistor like this you drew a diode so I need to see wow. this transistor well, I need use this. your imagination it, I don't have it that's why I'm asking for a <laughs> there it says I can't draw PNP very well right I don't see anything wrong with this circuit it has no unknown components that are usually and there's no way this coil <laughs> can be producing <laughs> both positive and negative voltage nope. at the same time it might, might have a little small oscillation at the beginning of the end but who cares that should be so is there any silly thing that could happen <coughs> not any more than in the usual circuit right and plus that thing will be polarized Spice. the wrong way anyhow so why did yeah. you, why didn't they do this in the first place <laughs> Because they didn't have PNP transistors that were strong enough. I don't know. There's no change in functionality here that I can no, see. Just, just asking so, the question. So, can we wire this up? Yeah. The test set up and yeah. see let's what go. Happens? I mean, in the real module, I just add the transistor. Mm -hmm. We might have found our way out of the paper bag. Yeah. This is an Apollo 13 rescue. <laughs> we have to make a pulse like this, fit a transformer like this. Where does the duct tape come in? <laughs> so you are you're putting it in. A, should I wait for that or should no, I wire it up? I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, you're splicing? Yeah, it yeah. has inductors. I don't trust inductors. And this is when I reach for my collection of transistors and. Here we have one that's about to write 40 volts, 600 milliamp, and it's fast. And I have two of them. And so we've decided to implement this variation of the circuit. And I sort of have to figure out how it works in here. Uh, clip, clip. Collect from below, clip and reroute, reattach this wire that we are taking off for testing and finding the fault, and splice in my transistor. I have snip and solder according to my diagram, and here is my Apollo 13 style heroic repair. <laughs> If that get us out of trouble, that would be something. We already confirmed actually that we removed the fault, yep. right? So now, uh, so that was the snipping part, and now I will say if we have recovered the functionality. All right, it's up to you, Mike. Test it. So we should see the same diagrams the, um, that you had before. Yeah. Two pulses. That's a theory. Ready for power on? Yeah. All right, not all current. Let's do some pulses. That looks like a core flip in both ways. So it works? It looks like it works. It looks like it works. It's a dynamic glitch, but... Is that going to be a problem? Right, the other transistor is getting a little pulse that might be enough to backflip the core. Mm. You think so? Do you want me to switch over to a different core? Well, yeah, yeah, test the ones we repaired, see if the other ones are repaired. Yes. And, oh, it has the same pulse on the original circuit too. Yeah, okay, so we are no different than the original circuit. Okay, that's promising. Yeah. All right, so we just have 
a slight bounce afterwards and so if it didn't do anything in their circuit mm -hmm. The fact that we have a double bounce. So you know why? It must be because our transistors are not matched. This one is very symmetric. You have one, one big one, one, one two big ones. Mm -hmm. And we have a small one and then one and another one. Right. So uh, that's because... The reversing. Well, I, no, it's not, two, it's not twice the same NPN transistor anymore. Right. It's not mm -hmm. twice exactly the same circuit. Yep. It's an NPN and a PNP. Brilliant! I thought we were done for... <laughs> okay, so I'll just uh, hide the, the repair. I think I can put the transistor inside the case. Right now it's sticking out, but we'll get it going. All right, phew! So there's still a chance that we could get the erasable memory working. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so this is our final, final repair. Triple bypass surgery. <laughs> But it's all nicely insulated with original white looking wire. Okay. Current is good. And it's good. Ah. that's what we're expecting to see. Alright. Phew. <laughs> I got a little scare. Up here? What's that? Well, uh, I, I did my final tuck in of the transistor and retest it and I felt pretty confident <laughs> and uh, it didn't quite work. Now I had only a few wires to solder, but I managed to solder them wrong, but now it's repaired, it works. So the triple bypass surgery module gets a clean bill of health, but man, was it sick. <laughs> Gee wee, what did they do with that module? I have no idea. This, this was from one of the eight, the middle revision AGCs. So okay. ours, ours is one of the 15 prototypes. And then uh -huh. there were eight AGCs that were the next model. Uh -huh. And then the next model after that was like flu. So okay. this is from one of those middle eight. And those were used for like extensive qualification testing. Oh, so, so. It, it, might have, it might have had a tough life? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those AGCs probably had tough lives. But, yeah, I don't know, these, these look like point failure, right? Yeah. Overcurrent and uh, in the diodes and uh, what, what else can happen in a transformer where you let it long for, let it you know, on for too long. Right. And this, and this, this is probably what happened. I don't know, we can't tell, but it was not doing well and now it is repaired. So here we go, this is the last four modules that have to go back into the AGC. If those go in, then the AGC will be called totally repaired. Mm -hmm.